Hello to those who have joined us from the main campus in Grand Junction. I see some returnees, which is always a positive sign, and along with some new faces. John, Candace, William, Raj, Thomas, and Cindy, it's nice to have you here once again. As our usual practice, this demonstration will be followed by a Zoom session where I will answer your questions which you have compiled during our session in our virtual parking lot. Then, in an ongoing session in VoiceThread and in our scheduled Brightspace discussion group, we will be able to collaborate further. So, let's jump right into learning. First, let's make sure you've downloaded Panopto. On the screen, you will notice in your application section the application Panopto. You need to make sure that you've downloaded this onto your computer. So, I'm going to do a check for understanding right now. Uh, just let me know virtually if you have downloaded Panopto. And I see that uh, all of you have uh, raised your hand or acknowledged me affirmatively. That's a great thing. Uh, next, what we want to do is we want to review previous learning uh, to do a short review of your previous video recordings. I know some of you, uh, being old hands at this, have done this before and are quite versed at it. Uh, if you're brand new to Panopto or you're brand new to uh, Colorado Mesa University in the D2L Brightspace environment, not to worry because I can help you in a one-on-one -on -one session uh, later on. All you need to do is reach out to me or register for sessions that I will record in the future. So how this is going to go today is you're going to have a very short uh, discussion or a, dis a short lecture on how to embed your created videos from Panopto into the D2L Brightspace environment within your classroom settings. So while this is all good in regards to online education, it also works quite well in the on-site environment because video is a patient teacher. Your students can access the material over and over again uh, until they get it right or until they have been able to uh, assimilate that knowledge for your uh, use in the classroom. Obviously, one of the things that uh, the online environment lets us do is it lets us get the material to students in a blended fashion, which gives them the option to understand and to be able to do more things once they arrive in an on-site environment. Then, of course, what you need to learn and what you'll be able to know and be able to do at the end of today's short session is you'll be able to practice how to embed this material into the Brightspace environment. So with that in mind, let's just jump right into it. So once you have downloaded Panopto, which you said that you have done, uh, you would go to your Panopto recordings. Now, I've already launched my Panopto in another tab. So just indicate to me, if you would please, that you are at this location at the present time. I'll pause for a minute and just check my uh, Zoom session that's going over here to the side. Okay, it looks like everybody's good. And yes, Candace, I see your question. Uh, we'll get to that in a little while. If you're okay with that, just give me a thumbs up. Excellent. Thank you for asking that question. We'll make sure that's addressed later on in our Zoom session. So uh, thank you guys for being involved with that and being interactive. So when you get to Panopto, one of the things that you're going to see is you're going to see your folder in some of the other shared locations. You'll also be able to see under the Create button several different options. You'll be able to record a new session. You'll be able to upload media. You'll be able to create a webcast that you can embed into your announcements within the Brightspace platform. You're going to be able to do scheduled recordings, build sessions in groups, and add new folders. Let's say you were just assigned a new class to teach for Colorado Mesa University or Western Colorado Community College. You're going to be able to create folders for each one of those things. And I'm going to tell you that that is a terrific option because what it does is it allows you to maintain some sort of control or organizational process in the material that you create. So I see that uh, Robert has joined us from Western Colorado Community College. Robert, how are you doing today? That's great to see. So thank you for uh, being here for this process. And we can get Robert caught up uh, here in a minute. But one of the things that we are doing is we're going to show you where to embed material within the Brightspace platform uh, and how you get your material to those locations. So now that we've kind of had a chance to review prior or 
prior learning, you're going to be able to do this quite easily uh, on your own. And of course, once again, I will set up my individual sessions with you to support your learning in either case. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our home page, and this is going to be uh, fairly uh, familiar to all of you, or it should be. I'm just checking to make sure you're all good with that as a courtesy. Very good. So everybody indicates that they're in good shape. So what we're going to do is just demonstrate to everyone, making sure that everybody's comfortable with how to get into their classroom setting. So for example, for those of you that are brand new, you'll have the D2L or Desire to Learn Brightspace Environment application, and that's where you'll go first. So right here, you can see Colorado Mesa University online information. Uh, that's uh, your landing page. But in this area here, as most of you know, is where you will locate your classes. So you can see the classes that I am teaching or have taught uh, and today for our purposes is I'm going to go to flipping the D2L classroom and I've set this module up to support our learning objectives today. So what this module is, is using instructional video in the Brightspace Learning Management System or LMS. For those of you that are not familiar with what a LMS is, it's a way to provide a simple one-stop shop to support learning in a way that is uh, uh, easily able to be assessed or uh, where you can create content in an easy fashion. So in this particular session, what you're going to be able to do is learn how to create and embed video into the blended learning environment. So typically what I will do is I will uh, provide a welcome for my students in the form of a Panopto video or maybe some sort of a small screencast which I embed directly into the announcements. So in this case, I just introduce myself. My name is Don Davidson. I want to welcome everybody to today's interactive learning session. Uh, for those of you that are brand new, I am a faculty supervisor instructor and adult blended learning specialist at Colorado Mesa University. So Robert, uh, you may have heard uh, of me before, but uh, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to just be courteous and make sure everybody understands where I'm going and who I am. Uh, this is not a sit and get lecture. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn two important new skills that you'll be able to implement in your online classroom immediately by listening to an explanation of the steps and skills involved, and then practice these skills in your own personal sandbox. So using the Brightspace by D2L Learning Management System, this is part and parcel of what we do at CMU. Today, by the end of this self-guided learning experience, you'll be able to, one, create a Panopto instructional video as a vehicle to demonstrate a skill in your own online classrooms and be able to embed that video into the Brightspace LMS. So the Brightspace LMS will let you repeat the instructional component as many times as you need to do so in order to master the learning objectives. Remember, there is no limitation with online blended curriculum and learning and video is indeed a patient teacher. So thank you for being here today. Before we leave this location in your Brightspace classroom, uh, just a review of a prior uh, lesson that we have gone over, and that is how to create upcoming events for your students to see. You can see that I have created an event called Embedding Panopto into D2L and Educator's Perspective. Uh, in this area also, there are content questions and content information that you will be able to access after our Zoom meeting, which will enable ongoing collaboration. So I'm going to pause for a moment just to make sure that everybody's had a chance to locate and open the course content widget. So I'm going to check to make sure I'm getting responses from you. Everybody looks good. Everybody's there. That's terrific. So what you will see in the course content widget are things that you have imported to this section to allow your students or the folks that you are working with the opportunity to go to uh, other things that will help them understand the base objective. So in this case, I have placed VoiceThread, Panopto recordings, which I've done before that relate to this subject, and also 
a Panopto demonstration video that will teach you how to actually create Panopto videos in the future. So let's say, Robert, uh, you're at Western Colorado Community College and you have a colleague that would really like to know uh, how to create Panopto videos, which most of you know how to do already, you can go back with them to this particular area and give them the opportunity to learn this at their own speed, at their own pace, and in a way that's comfortable in their own personal exploration sandbox. So those are all important things to remember that you have access to. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how you create and embed information into your announcements. So what I'm going to do, and I would like you to just pay attention to this first, you're going to have an opportunity here in a minute to practice this skill. But if I could make sure everybody's looking at what I'm doing on the screen, what you would do is you would access the course news dropdown. And what you're going to do is if you can go to the announcements tool or you can create a new announcement. So what you're going to be doing in a minute when you practice this skill is you're going to be dropping down and you're going to be selecting new announcement. So I'm going to make sure everybody is where they need to be. Go slow to go fast, as we say, to make sure that you're uh, caught up and everybody's comfortable. Sounds great. So select a new announcement here in a minute. And what will happen in the Brightspace environment is you'll be able to provide a headline for your students. So I'm going to provide a headline and I'm going to call this embedded video. Now you can call it whatever you want, but it's important to make sure that the students are actively accessing the announcement area so they know what to do in advance because in a blended learning environment, this is the real beauty of being able to look at things ahead of time. So in the content area of this announcement, you would describe what the task is. You could put in embedded videos. You can insert uh, access or URLs to YouTube videos. I do this quite often in my own YouTube channel uh, where I will put uh, YouTube videos that I have uploaded into uh, my students' folders or I will have them access this in order to complete a certain task or an assignment. So with that in mind, uh, up here, what I'd like you to pay attention to are these three particular uh, icons in the header under content. So after I have put in some verbiage about embedding video or watching uh, information that I have installed here, I will put a little placeholder there and I will select return, which moves my cursor down. Now, at this point, I want to put something in there. Let's say it's a video that you've created yourself or it's a video that you have from YouTube. And of course, we always want to make sure that we are uh, exercising uh, fair use uh, privileges, uh, making sure that we're not taking copyrighted material uh, that cannot be uh, actively accessed by students for uh, education in this environment. So you're all familiar with that. We've done uh, some work with that before. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to go back to your folder and you're going to uh, select some information or select some sort of uh, video that you've created before. So for the purposes of this demonstration, you're going to come down to a video that you've created before, in this case, my body paragraph and conclusion video, and you're going to be able to do lots of different things. But what I want you to do here in a moment when you practice is I want you to select share. So I'm going to pause for a moment just to make sure everybody understands how to get to this point. Okay, I'm seeing people indicating yes. So once again, I want to make sure I'm being courteous and going slow enough so I'm not leaving anyone behind in this important component. Okay, let me go back because I see Candace has a real quick question and this is critical. Uh, when you're at the announcement location, Candace, this is where you will find uh, ways of embedding video. Okay, uh, that's helpful to you. Thank you for indicating that. And then what you want to do because you already know how 
to launch Panopto, and I know that you've made recordings before, is you want to go to your Panopto recordings. So, okay, good. So you're in a good place. That's very good. So once you have located what it is that you want to embed, you will select Share. Okay. Once you have selected Share, there are many options that you can provide. Obviously, today we're not going to talk about different out outputs to your students or anybody uh, who happens to have access to this. What we want to do is we want to talk about how to embed this into your announcements. And really, it can't be any easier. What you do is you select Embed from this location, and you simply copy and paste this information. And for those of you that are Mac users, most of you are, it's simply Command-C as a shortcut on your keyboard, or you can go ahead and copy and paste from the header in your browser. But what I did is I selected that, I selected Copy, or Command C, and now it is actually copied to my uh, desktop. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the new announcement. All right, just making sure that everybody is there and they understand where we're going with this. So just to review the objective one more time, we're going to input the Panopto video into a new announcement. So what we've done is we've gone to Panopto and we've selected the embed option and we have copied that information in the embed code. And now what we want to do is make it available down here in the announcement. So I'm seeing positive reaction to that. That's great. Here in a minute, again, you'll have an opportunity to practice this. But right now you're just learning the steps. And of course, this video, once again, will be available in this particular learning environment so you can go back and look at it as many times as you need to support what it is that you know or need to know and be able to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to this icon and notice what it says. It says insert stuff. It can't be any easier than that. Obviously you can put pictures in line. You can also insert quick links uh, to different URLs out there, but for the purposes of our instruction today, what we're going to do is we're going to insert stuff. So here in a minute, you're going to select that. And notice that in this area, there are many places that you can get stuff. You can get stuff from the files that you've already uploaded, of uh, files that you share with other people, YouTube, Flickr, links, those sorts of things. Also, the third-party applications like VoiceThread or even Films on Demand. But for the purposes today, what we want you to know and be able to do is how to enter code in your announcements. So you're going to find Enter Embed Code. You're going to select that. What will happen? A box will pop up. Then what you're going to do is simply paste the code into that box. Of course, you can do that up here by selecting Paste, or you can simply go Control-V on your keyboard. So I'm going to pause to make sure everybody's okay with that. There's no uh, body that's experiencing any dissonance right now. Some of it is pretty old hat to most of you, but I want to be courteous and make sure you're getting it. Okay, so once you've done this, you're going to come down here and select Next. Okay, now it'll give you a preview of what it's going to look like, and you can either examine that preview right here, or if you're happy with it, you're going to select Insert. Okay, we're going to select Insert, and right now what it is that you've created will show up in this new announcement. Okay. Another thing that's kind of important that some of you or most of you know something about already, but uh, maybe Robert, uh, being from Western Colorado Community College where this is brand new, uh, may need just a little bit of review. So he's indicating yes that he does, so I'm happy to do that for you. So very quickly what you've done is you've embedded the video by inputting the uh, embedding code into your announcement. And as you scroll down, you're going to be able to adjust the availability, when this starts, when it ends, 
when you want to remove it, and if you want to add files or you want to record other audio, you have an option of saving this as a draft if you're not quite ready to make this go real time, or you can publish it. For the purposes of what we're doing today, you're going to simply select Publish. So now you've published this. This is a new announcement. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like in regards to a preview. You can come up here under the drop down menu and you can edit this. You can dismiss it. You can delete it if you want to try all over again. But for our purposes, we're pretty happy with this. So now you have this done. It's embedded. You've put information into the course announcements worksheet and you're ready to go back and take a look at it and see how it's going to look from a student's perspective. So in order to do that, you're going to come up here to flipping the D2L classroom. And in your environment, you may have actually named this something different. It may actually be the name of your course. Uh, so basically, this is your way back to where you want to be. Okay, so now we're back where we started and look at this, uh, success. What you've been able to do now is you've been able to embed a video within an announcement that will allow your students to go back uh, to learn from a very powerful tool that you have created or that someone else has created and of course you've given, given credit to and you're able to do this in a way that will help them not only achieve the best practices of being able to look at the material ahead of time, but also the ability to go back and access it over and over again. So that's terrific. So now I see that some of you have uh, started to put questions in our parking lot. That's terrific. When we finish here, uh, we're going to pop over to the Zoom platform and we're going to have a question and answer session. So to go back, what you know or what you should know and be able to do is you need to know now how to access videos from your Panopto library. You need to uh, be able to feel comfortable in sharing these videos uh, and copying the embed code. And you ought to be comfortable in creating a new announcement where you're able to insert the embed code into that announcement and then publish it so your students can look at what it is that they need to do or be prepared for in your next class. So with that in mind, uh, one last thing that I would like to talk with you about that some people may or may not have had experience with, and this is kind of a bonus component in this get together, is making sure that these videos are accessible to our students at Colorado Mesa University. And what do I mean by accessibility? I'm seeing some of you indicating uh, with head nods that you are aware of what this is. And basically what accessibility is, is making sure that we are making these videos or this uh, verbiage that we're putting into our announcement accessible to those with some sort of disability, whether that be hearing, sight, or otherwise. So we want to make sure that's uh, available to them. So what I do is I uh, typically will take my Panopto videos and I will export them to YouTube. And YouTube is a great place uh, in your YouTube channel, many of you have those, to make sure that there are uh, screen readers available, that the contrast is acceptable, uh, also that they have captions, closed captions. Uh, as of right now, uh, in this environment, in the D2L Brightspace environment, there are no captions available in that coding. And I know they're working on that coding procedure to make that uh, the new feature in the upcoming uh, iteration of Brightspace. So with that in mind, we will go next time to doing accessible videos and how we take these things that we have put into uh, Brightspace and to put them into another utility uh, interface like YouTube in order to help students access the material if they happen to need, and most people do, and are benefited from accessible videos.
So with that in mind, I want to thank you for being here. I'm going to sign off and we're going to go to a Zoom session. Uh, right now in the interim, what I'd like you to do is uh, go ahead and log in to Brightspace using your individual computers remotely and prepare for a demonstration on how you will actually use this information on embedding video into an announcement. And of course, I'll be here looking over your shoulder, uh, albeit virtually, to support your learning in this regard. Because after all, what you need to know and be able to do is to insert this material and help your students to improve academically and uh, learn more about the technology that we have at our disposal. So with that in mind, thank you for being here today, and uh, I will see you in the VoiceThread plat platform, in Zoom, and in future Panopto recordings. Take care.